Welcome to Switch Comics. My name is Marco. I'm Chris. And today is New Comic Book Day. We got a decent stack of books. Yeah, sure nothing out. nothing too crazy, but it's a, it's a pretty decent stack. Uh, and then I got a couple... I got an eBay comic purchase and then an action figure thing we're going to show off at the end of the video as well. Um, and then, yeah, so let's go ahead and hop into it. Starting, as always, with our Marvel books... So we have Fortnite, uh, Marvel Zero War, issue number five, the finale, and uh, yeah, like I said, like the rest of the series, it was fine. It was yeah, fun. it was just a fun. Gave me a free Fortnite skin. Yeah, just something fun to do uh, with all these characters. I think um, it. I like the way that they designed all these Fortnite characters, where they're all just so ridiculous, and it kind of feels like. Like old school comic book characters, yeah. and it's like this. This is just dumb, you know what I mean? Like in a fun way, but and just over the top and ridiculous. And uh, I don't know. I feel like they were able to mesh well with all the uh, Marvel heroes and everything. Um, we also, you know, we always grab two covers because we both need a code. Got the and so, homage. yeah, I picked out that one. I thought it was pretty neat. I picked out the Doom one, of course. Yeah. And I then the, uh, Secret Wars homage was fun too. I like all the yeah. different Fortnite and Marvel characters fighting. I think there was another uh, cover that was uh, pretty cool too, but I can't remember. Yeah, I remember. I oh, think... there was the like one in twenty five or whatever. Oh, the one in twenty five uh, was, was like, really Wolverine nice with Wolverine. Wolverine. Like, a circle yeah. behind him. And then so we have uh, Thor twenty seven, which a uh, sad bit of news on this one. I've been loving the Thor run. Uh huh. It's been absolutely great. Which has entirely been Kate's. Uh huh. And so this, I don't know if something's going on because it feels like. Thor's been slowing down as far as like release dates, and um, we noticed we looked at the new Marvel preview uh, this week, which we don't have one here with us. But um, we noticed that um, there's a different writer. I can't remember the name, but they did um, Jane Foster Thor uh, that that little mini run and something yeah. else. Uh, they're going to be working on the next advertised issue, which I I want to say is that. No, I don't think it is 28. I don't remember now, but I just remember... I guess it's probably after whatever... However many parts of this Venom story we're going to get. Yeah. But, um... Which, it's written by Ewing, and you know how we feel about Ewing. Yeah, so, but w what's weird to me is, like... So, it says, uh... Out Ewing and Donny Cates plot. But then the script is from Out Ewing. Um, and you can feel it. And, it, yeah, it just does not feel... Like any of the rest of this entire run, which I've loved. This is the run that got me into comics. There's a lot of, like, exposition via just, like, text given. There is, but I guess more straightforward. Yeah. Because, like, Donny Cates does that a lot. He'll just have his, his big black box of text everywhere. Nobody's talking. And, you know, that's what's so cool about, like, the, that very first issue where Mjolnir's flying through space. Yeah. And it, he's just talking about space and all this other crap and whatever. But this is and, and boring. It, it, yeah. <laughs> that's, but that's what I'm saying. Donny Cates has a way to do it, and it's cool. Like, you, you, it feels epic. Or, you know, spe specifically for with this Thor run, I feel like always, like, there's this big, grand sense of epicness. Um, because Thor's an epic character, you know what I mean? Like... He's the Thunder God. Well, King now, but uh, he's still the Thunder God. Oh well, yeah, but Thunder King, Thunder King God, um, Thunder God King. But yeah, I wasn't in love with this issue. Uh, Probably the worst issue of Thor so far. 100% so is, you know, you got Venom on the cover here, so like, uh, you know that the art's some, still good. Some oh, it's a I forgot oh, name. Is it Laroca? Yeah, I like Laroca. Um. And then I think Nick Klein on is going to be on that other issue. Who that does the cover? At. Same guy. Um, I don't know who does this one. Um, color art is. It's probably just Laroca as well. Yeah. Oh no, it is Klein. It is Klein. Okay. Um, which yeah, I like Klein stuff. Klein's. I've always liked mainly the been Thor. Yeah, because it's mainly been Klein. I think you know every now and then it's not, but. Um, Especially <clears> the next <throat> issue, the one with like him. And uh, Venom fighting. Yeah, where they're, like, falling or whatever. Yeah. yeah that's cool. But anyway, um, yeah, I just, I don't know if something's going on. Maybe Kate's isn't wanting to write too much Marvel stuff anymore. Because um, it just feels like Hulk and 
Venom had like slowed down a lot. Um, and that's all he's got left on Marvel. And have been two great runs. Mm-hmm. I would think if he was wanting to get out, um, he wouldn't have picked up Hulk. Unless he really, really wanted to do a Hulk versus Thor. And then now that he's done that, he's like, okay. But like... So in, uh, in, it, it's such contrast because I just read the last uh, one of Hulk. Yeah, right before reading this, which is an amazing. Yeah, setup it was point. really good. It's so and I was so hear, excited just to read that compared to this. Yeah, this is this is nothing, and that's what that's what it, it feels like reading uh, all all of the Venom stuff with uh, Ron V and uh, Ewing. I just feel like s- just nothing when I uh, I take nothing from it. <clears throat> but uh, I'm I'm just worried because that one with the other writer I can't remember their name. Um, they uh, or it said like you know it has a little description in the in the preview magazines or whatever, and it's talking about like uh, Thanos and, and and stuff, and it's like that's like the big thing that like uh, you know and I don't know if that was Thor issue six or something. You know he saw yeah. the the vision of his death, and you know that really cool full splash page and everything and. Maybe like, he could just be taking a break. Let's hope he's just taking a break. Yeah, I'm hoping so. I mean, because like we've been building to that for 20 issues. Yeah, uh, and it's going to be even more until we actually get there. You know what I mean? So, I, I I've been really excited to see that uh, happen, and I've been fine patiently waiting. But I just don't want to have been patiently waiting and then it be terrible at the end. Because that's the thing. Like, I feel like even if for whatever reason, Kate's couldn't come to this issue. Uh, or, or if he just was done with the full series, even if he was like it, it was his full plan, I'm going to do the, the Banner of War stuff. It left off a, 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 with such a cool way for Thor, you know. Yeah. And uh, we were talking about this in the shop the other day, or something, or maybe on stream. I don't remember. We were talking about this the other day, though. And it's so frustrating to me how the full like Donny Cates Venom run in King of Black and all that ended left Venom in such a cool spot. And they did... And Ewan and Ron V has done nothing with with Venom, in my opinion. It, 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 it's like they did not care at all about what happened to him. And they're just like, yeah, whatever, we're just going to do our own I thing. I guess a comparable thing is like in a sitcom where they just have to kind of return to the status quo. And that's kind of what it did, in a way. Cause if, was if, make if, just Venom regular Venom instead of... Yeah, the super god venom. But for no reason. And again, we haven't been reading it for several issues, so things could have changed. But what was it? Were we like eight issues in, eight or nine? Something like that, and it's just bad. It was bad. But it's just like, why put Venom? So like, Donny Cates is leaving Venom. Uh, well, specifically leaving Eddie Brock as a, a a god now. He's more powerful than he's ever been. And then you get uh, Dylan Brock, that is the new Venom. And so, like I said, like an easy pitch for something cool uh, would have been so, like, just start. That's another thing. The, the series just starts off and it's like, we're going to kill Eddie Brock and we're going to do this and whatever. Like, just complete chaos and immediately. I feel like the series sort of started a little slower. Had, you know, uh, Dylan learning the ropes of being Venom and everything. And uh, Eddie could have been doing kind of what he is in that issue or in that series where he's. You know, helping afar, kinda, yeah. and, uh, and and doing a lot everywhere, and um, I think you know, in his exploits, if he found like s- something big, you know, another big bad, it's always leading to another big bad. That's how how things go, but then like you know, that big bad comes to Earth, and like you know, it is too strong for for Eddie, but then he like venomizes everybody else, and like you know how like sometimes like. Tony Stark will give, you know, uh, Iron Man suits to other people, help boost them up, or specific, iron, like there's Iron Cat going on right now, and st- stuff like that. Specific tailor-made suits. Just Venomize everybody. It's a great marketing thing. Everybody always loves Venomized everything. And then, like, it it makes Venom feel powerful, though. It makes him contributing. And it's it's like, you know... it. it give, have them all give a big We Are Venom. You know, it could have been so cool. But instead, nothing is happening with Venom. Venom's just pathetic. Um, but anyway, we got the A cover, and then we also got... I just got... feel like he was a god for so little. Yeah, he was a god for like five minutes. And until he found out there were stronger Venom gods. 
Yeah, it was like, and that's the thing. Like, I feel like if we built to there being stronger Venom gods, which I still, I just don't like the idea. Because, like, Noel was so cool. And, like, Noel is from the beginning of, before time. Yeah. Like, we don't need to go back further than that in the Venom lore. Um, it just seems so, so pointless. Because, like, I don't know. It's like, how do you go from before time? You know what I mean? But, uh, but again, like, if you give him an enemy that's stronger or just as strong as him, but it's a different thing, it doesn't have to be a Venom, then it's like, okay, that's fine. He can fight something else. Um, one thing I do like from the Venom run, and we're talking a lot about Venom, even though we're showing off Thor. Uh, I like, at that first issue, when one of his symbiote things gets taken over, and you don't really know what's going on, and like it's like asking for help, and it's like it doesn't want to be doing what it's doing and killing people and stuff. But which is weird because wasn't that Al Ewing that wrote that? Yeah, that part was good. Like the first, and like, I, I like the first like issue. The first one and like a few more in, he wrote that one, and those ones were actually kind of good. I liked those ones, but I didn't like the story. No, it was just boring. Like, well, at least it's not Romvi. And and v- Venom shows up, or like some symbiote thing. I don't know what they're called. Uh, some symbiote thing shows up in this story. Um. It's not even Venom. I have Venom on the cover. It's not even Venom. Anyway, I mean, maybe he'll be in the next issue. Maybe he won't. I really don't know. But some symbiote thing shows up, and it's just like, I could care less. Like, there's so many times, like, a character will pop up, like, uh... And, well, and like, because a lot of these uh, writers like to do, like, brand recognition and introduce their characters they're also writing on. So, like, obviously, Ewing's gonna, you know, throw in Venom into this. But, like, I love when I'm, uh... Was, like, reading, like, Devil's Reign or something, and, and uh... Oh, no, that wasn't, um... Jed McKay, what am I thinking? Um, what did Jed McKay... Death of Doctor Strange. And and brought in Moon Knight. Um, even though it was a little tiny thing... I still haven't read that yet. <laughs> Forgot to. Which one? That's the one I missed. The Death of Doctor Strange and Moon Knight. You never read that one? Yeah, no, I, I told you that. And you said it's the best one. Blah, blah. And then I was like, yeah, I never read it. <laughs> I told you to read... Uh, earlier today? I was telling you to read Strange. Yes. Oh, was it... Death of Doctor Strange brought in Moon Knight? I'm pretty sure he did at some point. Because I was flipping through that strange book and... Moon it was Knight a tie-in. It was a tie-in. I don't remember. Anyways. <laughs> anyway. But my, my point being is, like, I'm excited when I see Moon Knight, or I'm excited when, um... Um... Jed McKay did a... Like, a Spider-Man title, and, of course, he was wor- working on Black Cat. And so, like, I, I like when these, these writers, like, have certain characters they like, but... It, it venom or the, not even venom. It's like the symbiote thing just pops up in in this Thor story. Slight, there's slight spoilers, spoilers, but like it's just like nothing. It's just like why are you here? What are you doing? I don't care. Nothing's happening. Nothing happened in this issue. Yeah, venom uh, appeared and was just like, hey, I'm here now. Yeah, it, like literally, that's all it was. Hey, Al Ewing's writing this issue. You know, you know, it's like <laughs> all right, special but, guest venom. Hey guys. Um. And then we have, uh, what is this? This is one shot. No, this is number ten. Judgment Day. Yeah. Tie in um, Spider Man number ten. And I think you could read this without having to read the whole thing. Um, yeah, because Chris isn't reading Spider-Man, so he just read yeah. it for the Judgment Day tie-in aspect. Uh, and I was just curious about, because uh, the way the Judgment Day thing's been going on, uh, the Celestial, uh, the progenitor, there we go, has been um, showing people basically ghosts of their past or people that are important to them. And for Peter Parker, it was Gwen Stacy. And so, uh, it was okay. Uh, maybe I did need to read more Spider-Man to make it make a little more sense. Um, here and there, it explains a decent amount about what's going on in Sp- uh, Peter Parker's life right now. So. Yeah. But no, if you're enjoying Judgment Day, I, I think you'd enjoy that. You can talk a bit about uh, the comic, and I'm, we're not going to argue about this because we've already talked about it. We've already talked enough in the video, but. Just take a good look oh glance God. at that. Take a good look glance at that, everybody, and tell me if this is not a really ugly cover. I think it looks fine. We, we don't need to argue about it. Just say in the comments if you think it is or isn't. Um, anyway, uh, you be Judgment team Day. Lame or Team Cool? <sighs> Anyways. Talk about the comic room. We'll sit it down and we'll move on. So, uh, much like uh, with Peter Parker and uh, Gwen Stacy and all that, this is basically Tony Stark's Judgment. And it kind of goes through his history of abuse and. Uh, well, they didn't do it with Iron Man then. If Iron yeah. Iron Man has a run going on, you think if this is really more so about Iron, Man. but I guess Avengers is the. Uh... Well, it does actually talk about that. 
uh, the Iron Man run in this yeah. a bit. Um, as well as read that. a few other things here and there. But I really think you'd enjoy this if you're an Iron Man fan, because it just goes through his history of not just, like, uh, his alcohol abuse and stuff, but also his personal tra tragedies and stuff. and really kind of delves into the character of Tony for a minute. All right, I might check it out. Uh, did you read this one? Uh, yeah. That was fun. Picked up this cool... Uh, I'm still not sure I, like, it, love it. Is this a Hispanic Pride? Yeah, I think it is. Okay, because it didn't... Look at the top. Didn't they have another one that was also Hispanic Pride? Yeah, it's a Pride oh. variant, actually. Oh, this is... This, oh, because this, uh, this is a... That makes sense. She's got a little variant. Pride button on her uh, uh, collar there. That makes sense. I was about to say, because I think Thunderbolts also has no, a Hispanic... No, you have to ask yourself the question. Or no, yeah, these are Pride, and the other is one's Hispanic Is it LGBT heritage. Pride, or is it uh, Hispanic Pride? It's... <laughs> Poth? Both? Poth? Poth. This is Poth. Alrighty. Any uh, anyways, yeah, that was fun. I don't know if I love it, um, but I'm probably still going to keep reading it. I wasn't super interested in the Thunderbolts run, or this particular lineup, mainly because I'm still kind of uh, mad because they... They set up a really cool Thunderbolts team two teams ago, and it was a great run, the King of Black run, and then they brought back some of the characters. Actually, it might have just been... Uh, Taskmaster. Taskmaster. Mm, that's probably it. Yeah. And it was not at all... Like, Taskmaster clearly had more stuff to do, and, like, it was it was so wild to, like, set up something, and then... Br they could have at least not put Taskmaster back on the team. I would have been more fine with that. But then they just brought him back, and he basically didn't talk. And he just fought and, and didn't even fight cool. You know I liked I mean? his little bit of moments in uh, the first Thunderbolts book of uh, this run. Yeah. They were fun. They felt very Taskmaster. Yeah. Like I said, I didn't even bother with this run just because the last one like irritated me so bad. Well, I, I guess it's, it's been out for a minute, so I'll just uh, spoil the first one. Uh, so the Thunderbolts are on the run because, you know, they're, they've broken the law. Um, they are super villains. Um, and Taskmaster is, like, ready to fight. These new Thunderbolts, you know? And then America Chavez shows up in front of him, and he's like, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought I was ready. You were shooting star portals. <laughs> yeah. And see, that's what... Uh, uh, Taskmaster's a cool and funny character, like, simultaneously. Like, he, he has a very interesting yeah. mixture. And um, he, he knows when he's screwed. <laughs> yeah. And... He, he's a lot of fun, and he just was zero fun, absolutely zero fun in the previous Thunderbolt yeah. run. Um, and it, it was just so irritating. Did you ever read that uh, final uh, Lethal Protector that he was in? I don't think I did, no. He was a lot of fun in that, too. I think I missed you should have. I do like we've been getting more Taskmaster. Yeah, here and there. Um, and granted, that one was like a, hey, this is a story that happened when Venom was still like early on his thing. But Yeah. If you have a chance, Which read... Jed McKay's uh, little five-part miniseries for Taskmaster. It's really good. Amazing. I one recommend of, one of my favorite miniseries. Either I don't know if they have a trade for it. I don't know if I ever saw a trade. Uh, but if you for can't that. get a trade for it, just read it online or something. Yeah, because like I the number. I usually recommend people uh, get the Marvel Unlimited app. The number three is not an expensive book, but it is a first appearance, and it's uh, not cheap. I think the second part might be a little. Bit. I mean, it all depends if Tiger Division uh, is a good book. Uh, yeah, I think I it just depends the more that they do with that, the more... Yeah. I think people need to read, um, and get more involved with those characters, because I think they're neat, but I feel like a lot of people just don't care. Yeah, anyway, moving on. We have Gambit number three, right? Yeah. And, uh, check it out, y'all. There's a Merca Andolfo cover, which I'm always worried I'm not saying that name right, but, um, she never does anything for Marvel. Like, never. Yeah, and this cover's really uh, nice. And so I was super excited. I like how blue it is, but just like the faint little hint of his red eye... Yeah, it's very nice. When when we were checking in books, um, you know, for all the comics and whatever, and I'm I'm going through the list, and Chris is, you know, grabbing the stacks of stuff and and uh, and making sure we have the right numbers and everything. And so I'm going through the list, and I and I'm like, uh, Gambit, the Andolfo cover, and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and this guy, uh, you read this? Oh yeah, yeah there, it was a lot of fun. I've been loving Gambit. It's been a yeah, it's been a fine series. It's um, not been like the best story in the world, but it's been very because I read uh some like old Gambit. Yeah. Uh, it's, I usually don't go back and read like old uh, characters' books and stuff. Um, but I, I liked old Gambit. Well, because like, again, this is Chris Claremont. Yeah. Uh, and so this is supposed to be like very early stories of, uh, of uh, Gambit and Storm. Um, so and it's, it feels very old and fun. If you like yeah. the old Gambit, you'll love this one. 
Yeah, it's not something that I love, but I do like it. I enjoy it. It's been fun. I'm a bit of a bigger Gambit fan. Yeah, he's so. more of a Gambit fan. I'm actually more interested in Storm than oh, wait, Gambit. Where is it? Where is it? Where uh, over there. <laughs> it's hard to point. <laughs> I'm looking at the screen. I'm like, it's got to be around here How somewhere. How did you look at it over next to look. my head? And you're like, oh, it's got to be over there. Uh, but then... Did Anyways, you, forget, did you uh, forget which one of us was who? <laughs> Shang Chi and the Ten Rings. <laughs> I need to read this series. I keep forgetting to. It's a pretty cool cover, though. Yeah, oh, I love this cover. Um, um, I read the last series and it was fantastic. I didn't read oh, this because I feel like I didn't read the last one. We're on to Star Wars. I read now. this one. Uh, Chewbacca and Han Solo was fine. I it's don't been a fine remember series. if I read the last one either. I was a little. I think. I was, no, no, no. I do remember. I uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You did. Yeah. I don't think I. It did. was okay. <laughs> okay, that was. We also picked up the. Uh, okay, don't ask too many questions. <laughs> Choose your destiny cover with Mace Windu, one of my favorites of all time. Love me some Mace Windu, and then we also picked up the uh, Lord Afra. Roman cover. Yeah, um, which Lord Roman hasn't gotten any love since like that short series where Darth Vader made his castle. I like the obscurity of some yeah. of the characters he's been choosing for these Choose Your Destiny covers. Because I love Lord Norman. He's an interesting, yeah. like... Oh, because I always uh, love the Sith that aren't motivated by, er, I'm evil. Because yeah. he just... He wanted to be a creepy architect that made, like, Sith buildings that had supernatural powers to them. Yeah. That's cool as hell. Everybody's got different ambitions, you know? So... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that couldn't work along. Oh, and his helmet also possessed anyone that put it on. As they do. He tried to possess Vader, but Vader beat him down. Um, I did want to mention real quick, we're going to be live streaming tonight. Uh, so if you didn't check out, we did some bonus live streams, again, in celebration for getting to 1,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much. Uh, but we did a bonus uh, stream. We started on Sunday night. We did one for like four hours and then did like a nine and a half hour stream on Monday. Yeah. Um, and which, uh, which Chris I'm is very tired. getting very close to completing I will complete his Star Destroyer. today. Yeah, well, yeah, so the goal is tonight's live stream is to complete the Star Destroyer. I don't so. care how long it is. I don't care if we have zero people in the audience. <laughs> I'm completing it. Chris, it's seven in the morning. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway. It shouldn't take me more no, than no. two and a half hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see. But anyway, uh, but yeah, so God, feel free to beautiful. stop by. I'm looking uh, at it Come right check now. on it. Um, it's, uh, it's it's pretty awesome. Uh, <laughs> the, the current completion of it's going to be probably a thumbnail. Yeah, yeah. But um, I think that's God, all the news. Beautiful. Oh, and the giveaway, uh, which if you're interested in entering the giveaway, you know, the, the video with all the details on how to enter, that's uh, like the main video on my channel. So if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. You have until Thursday night. That's tomorrow. Thursday night, all right, everybody? To enter into the giveaway, like, early, you know, like, 1 in the morning or something Thursday. I'm going to make, I'm going to be making the video so it'll come out Friday morning where I announce the giveaway winners. Um, so I think that is all the news I have for you now. Um, I'm going to be spending so much time just looking at it. Moving on to our very small DC pile. We have Nice House on the Lake number 10, uh, which completes the DC pile as no, well. No, you forgot one. A DC book? Uh-huh. Oh, did I not put them in the right order? Oh. Oh, I, for- I forgot that was DC. Yeah. Okay, so there's one more DC after this. Uh, but Nice House on the Lake, I've been enjoying it. Uh, I feel like this issue was a bit better than the last couple. I feel like this issue, or this series in general started really strong, and I feel like it kind of dragged a little bit. It's kind of weird to say, because, like, it's been kind of irritating where like some of the issues feel like it's like kind of slow but i really enjoy the writing at the same time and so it's good and like but it could be better i feel like um i really like the the characters all feel very well defined it's kind of a lot going on um and i feel like we got some answers and i feel like it's part of why i like this issue a bit more uh because there was some really cool very abstract weird things happening but it, it, it was weird to use that as a descriptor to say that helped make things make more sense um, I mean, sometimes a metaphor is good it's not a metaphor it's just like weird alien uh magic science i don't know it was some some stuff was happening but um but yeah it, it, was, it was it was neat it was also visually kind of cool to look at uh while also being cool kind of simplistic so yeah, there was one more DC book. Uh, I put this in the indie pile. Yeah. Uh, Sergeant Rock versus the Army of the Dead. 
So it is technically a DC horror book. But, uh, um, it's been fun. It's, it's fun. It's been fun? It's this, been, this one issue I'm has been fun. <laughs> no. Uh, no, it's... Uh, it was fun throughout the whole thing. It, it's got very... Like, uh, I'm trying to think about Basic palettes? Huh? Basic palettes? Yeah, the art's not, like, the best thing in the world. Well, it it's just, conveys it's the strange. message. Well, like, with the color... Uh, it's just like, this panel will be red, this one will be green, yeah, <laughs> this some, one will be blue. Sometimes that's all you need. You just need yeah. to convey an, an emotion. You know? Christmas panels. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, This is the Christmas section of the book. Uh, it's... I mean, what was I saying? Um, oh it, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to describe... It's been fun. Um, no, like the kind of... The, hasn't been fun. The army men group that they have. Yeah. There. It's very... Almost Inglorious Bastards, kind of how they're they're portrayed. Oh man, Inglorious Bastards versus Zombies would be a hell of a movie. Yeah, but just like in that kind of like, we're we're tough army men, you know. Yeah, we're gonna. I've got a cigar in my mouth. We're I'm gonna scalp to these zombies. Yeah. What's the point of that? I just like scalping yeah. things. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, they're uh, almost GI Joe esque in that sense of we're army men. Alright, we're going to continue with it? Yeah, it's fun. Alright. That's uh, not a bad thing, I should say. Yeah. Moving on to our indie stuff. I don't know if I'll continue with this or not. Uh, so we have Briar, number one. The covers are really good. Well, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> the covers on these, all of them were amazing. I settled with two. So, again, got another sweet Undolfo cover, which I really like. And I can't, I, I can't quite decide. I like both these a lot. I think I like this one. This is from Hans. And I think I like this one better. I think it's only slightly, but again, just an awesome cover. I think it is killer. Um, the story was okay. I don't know if I'll continue with it. Um, it was, I'll probably read it eventually. Uh, you know how, like, Thor... Which is like... By the way, it's like a dark twist on Sleeping Beauty. Um... It kind of like an alternate. I don't know. It's kind of hard. It's like I feel like there's going to be such little of this that really has to do with Sleeping Beauty. Like kind of what was the point? But uh, it's kind of my take on it right now. I feel like they were just like we're going to do a dark twist on pick a classic story, and then it ha- end up having like almost nothing to do with Sleeping Beauty. But um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, oh, lost. Oh, with the, with their dialogue. Like, you know how, like, Thor talks funny? Mm-hmm. You know, but, like, I don't know. I feel like every time I see Thor in, like, anything Marvel, whether it's, like, he's working with the Avengers or, like, in King and Black or, well, I guess that's still Donny Cates, but, like, Donny Cates has been doing him well, uh, but I, I, every now and then you see him pop up in somewhere else or something. and Oh, like, in, in Fortnite. Um, I feel like it's, like, an appropriate amount of... Thor speak. I don't know. I don't. I'm sure. Yeah. That's the name, but like Shakespearean. Yeah. Yeah. Dialogue. But this one feels so over the top. Like in um, like Marvel movies, you know. He this one talk like, like that the one thing time. that killed me in this is um, so she, she, this Sleeping Beauty's been asleep for like a really really long time. She never got woke up. Is kind of like the idea. Um, and then so uh, instead of saying like a hundred, she's been asleep for like a hundred years. They said something like she's been asleep for ten times. Uh, for, for like 10 years times 10 or something. Uh, but it was like just super goofy. 20 and, fortnights. And it, 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 I don't know. It was like, and some, I don't know. It might be one of those things where like this is accurate speaking for the time or something, you know? And it's like, I don't know. I, I, Sometimes I don't care. you need to take away accuracy to be understandable. Well, I, I, but then again, like I said, that might be it. I can't say that is the, the, the thing. To me, it felt like, it just felt like, they t- they wrote the script, and then every word they're like, "How can we change this? Make it old?" Just every single word, and it's like, "Please, just let me, let me let the story flow a little it's like bit." Like the uh, Shakespeare thesaurus with them. Yeah, and well, and it, it was not like I didn't understand it. It just felt like hard to flow. That's just the simplest way. Hard to flow. Uh, so moving on with uh, Grim number five. So this is the uh, prison cover. I uh, always get the frizzing covers, and a uh, pretty sweet one. Uh, this story's okay. Uh, I, I don't love it. It's it's fine. Uh, some kind of cool thing happens in this issue. 
I feel it's one of those things like I feel like this is what has all been building up to this big reveal uh, thing, and it's like yeah that was neat you know it's like I don't know if it wasn't for the fact that they had frozen covers, I probably wouldn't be getting this uh, this story. But even I've even considered to be like I could just stop reading it and still just collect the frozen covers and probably be fine with that. But I've already, I've already read you know so much of it. I don't know how long it's gonna go for it, and it, it's it's fine. Um, and then the last book we have Power is Rangers. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 100. This is the uh, C cover. Yeah, it's really cool. It's just a sweet, sweet cover. And I, I was talking to Chris about this. You rarely ever get to have the green and the white ranger on the same cover. Usually it's one or the other, you know. And, um, and so it's just super, super cool. And it, it's just really well done, too. Like, not only is it... Uh, oh, I guess it's, you know, I don't even pay attention. It's a wraparound. <laughs> so there's some other yeah, Power Rangers. Yeah. I don't care about them. Who are they? They're, I think, the new Power Rangers. Yeah, maybe the new ones. One of them's like a furry. Yeah, it is. But anyway, uh, but, yeah, whatever. I mean, we'll put it in the bag and board whenever you see the back ever again. But, um... We're actually going to rip the back off and <laughs> cut it off. I hate these Power Rangers. I hate it. Um... <laughs> we'll do it live on stream for 10000 We'll do it live on stream for 10000 But uh, But, anyway, $10, really cool. Not 10, subscribers. This book was $10, <laughs> though. Which, it's a thicker book, but it's not Would you not, eat that back cover for $10,000, Marco? Yes, I would do it for $10,000. I'd probably do it for $100. <laughs> All right. <laughs> then, to move on, uh, to we just got a couple pickups. Um, so, we're going to start with an action figure and then have a comic. Um, so, we picked up the Iron Spider. Um, and he's pretty cool. He's a really, really neat looking. They've been coming out a lot of Spider-Man lately, and this is the one I've been most excited for. After the black suit, which came out a while ago, but uh, I think black suit. I'm excited for all of them. I love Iron Spider. Spider I mean, like you gotta have levels at least, right? To me, he's like he's at the top. Yeah, he's he might even. I might have even been more excited for him. But I, actually, yeah, I would say I, I was more excited Spider-Man for him. I'm excited for you're not, and that's Japanese Spider-Man. But I was gonna say I was probably more excited for him now to think about it than the black suit. Despite the black suit being on the really nice body and being a really just super sweet figure, we've never had. Uh, or did they make an old one? I don't even think that did they make an old one. I don't know. I don't I can't I, remember. I think. I think they I made don't... like. Like a not Legends one. Yeah, I don't think Legends has ever had an Iron Spider or any. Legends comparable line. I don't think it's yeah. ever had a good Iron Spider in the six inch. There's a three and three quarter one, but, uh, but anyway, so there's yeah, movie, right? uh, and then you know there's a million black suit Spider Mans and a lot of them are are good, um, but this this latest one has been by far the best. But anyway, and then I picked up an uh, eBay purchase. I can't remember how much I paid for this. I want to say like maybe twelve or fifteen dollars, something like that. But I've been patient, been, been watching the price on it. And then I, I got on an eBay auction, and I picked up... I don't even know what book this is. X-Men uh, 1. So it's X-Men 1. Is this the Hell, no, it's not the Hellfire. It's just X-Men 1. It is the Art Adams 1 in 25 variant. Uh, there are still some other X-Men uh, um, Art Adams covers. Or at least one. There's that Rogue uh, Savage Land I know yeah. I still need to get. Um, they're killing me on these uh, ratio variants. There We saw... What was that Momoko... It was a one in fifty. I don't know. With magic on it. For Strange Academy, or the, you got there's me. some magic cover. This is Momoko, and it's sweet looking. It's a one in fifty coming up. Um, there's still I don't know. There's still a bunch of ratios I want to go back and buy, but like I try not to buy them at the time of release, because most of the time they go down in price. Uh, as long as there's nothing big or crazy about that issue, or sometimes if it's just a book that is just a really popular cover, and maybe especially if like it's a run where there's not a lot of people ordering the one in 25s, then maybe it ends up kind of going up in price because it's kind of hard to get. But uh, anyway, that's all I got for you. We're also going to open up the, the Iron Spider on stream tonight, if I didn't say yeah. that already. Uh, so while Chris is working on his Legos, I'm going to be doing that. And I don't know if I'm going to do anything. I'm going to talk to the chat, what I usually do. But uh, that's going to be it for today. I've got a pasta in the oven. We will see you next time. Have a good one. Ah. Ah.